Okay, this video is going to look at the source and sink relationship that plants have to go through. So a source being mainly leaves, and the sink in this case being the developing blackberry, and how these interrelate when we look at plants. So first, defining source and sink. Well, source are portions of the plant that are producing more energy, particularly sugars, than they are consuming. Sinks are net consumers of energy. So here's our source, in this case a leaf. Um, young leaves can be a sink. Acorns, in this case, can be a sink. Uh, roots can be a sink, and leaves are our main areas of source. Remember, fully mature leaves are a source tissue. Young leaves can actually be a sink themselves. So they can be net consumers of energy before they mature, then they can be net producers of energy. So looking again at some sources, these are typically green areas going through the process of converting light energy to sugars, this is then transported via the xylem. These carbohydrates are assimilated into storage, and they can go to roots, shoots, and fruits, and all other components there. Remember, entering the phloem, that can go up and down, being transported to where it's needed. So that transportation process here, um, the carbohydrate transport is through a process what we call translocation. And this is the movement of products of photosynthesis by phloem. So just put the picture of the train here to get the idea of moving products, moving a lot of products throughout the plant. So how translocation works, well, we have our source leaf here producing sucrose. Companion cells are loading it into the phloem within our sieve tube elements, and then that is transported and moving towards a sink cell where these companion cells are picking up those sucrose molecules and adding them to the sink cell. We also notice when we increase our concentration of sugar, water will move across. When we decrease our concentration of sugar, water will move back to the xylem. The basic equation for the entire photosynthetic process, again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that now. That's coming up in future and other videos if you'd like to watch those. Um, photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water utilizing light energy to form sugar and oxygen. Now, the reason why it's 6CO2 plus 6O2 in light, producing a C6H12O6 sugar molecule plus 6 oxygens, is this balances the equation. So there's the same number of carbon, hydrogens, and oxygens on this side as there are on this side. This is why the coefficients are necessary here, because we have this 6-carbon complex sugar. The process of incurring light energy to produce chemical energy, in this case sugar, and that's what we're seeing here. And these are refined sugar as cubes, but you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. Photosynthesis in general is that capture of light energy. We notice that that can go through and form starch or sugar storage organs in the sense of our tubers. Uh, it can be used for starch, which is sugar storage in an organ, um, a tomato in this case. Um, so we can see there's a lot of things going on here. And this is how this source-sink relationship plays into the plant. It's not just going from one area to another. Um, there's a lot of factors in play here. So in general, uh, sucrose is typically used for long-distance transport. Long-distance transport of carbohydrates is mainly in the phloem. And it's mainly in the form of sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide of glucose and fructose being linked together. And long-distance transport from a source um, cell all the way to some sort of sink cell. So the strength of sugar attraction, the ability of an organ to unload sugar from the phloem, determines the sink strength. So here's a sink cell, the root. The sink strength is how aggressive is that going to be at grabbing sugars and pulling them from the phloem in this case. Um, different sources are sinks, different cells I should say are sinks. And the sink strength refers to the ability or the aggressiveness of grabbing those sugars and pulling them towards themselves. Meristems are the site of actually dividing cells, forming new tissue, and typically found in the growing tips of roots and shoots. There's apical and lateral meristems. These should look familiar from some of the future, of some of the previous videos, and we're going to be dis discussing them now and into the future. And these are examples of meristems that require a lot of energy. They're typically sources of sink areas. So cell division drives the sink strength. Cell division will increase the sink size. The source-sink relationship will affect the entire plant. As we kind of show here with our, apple, our big apple on our little plant here, it's going to have a lot of sink strength, and that's going to drive a lot of the processes that the plant goes through. So again, remember our xylem and phloem, there are vascular connections. The xylem is moving water from the roots to the shoots, 
and phloem is moving mainly carbohydrates up and down in close proximity to companion cells. The phloem, the vascular tissues, transport sugars to other metabolic and other metabolic products. It can move materials up and down the plant. So again, as we see here, um, our sieve tube elements and our companion cells, um, these are all involved in the phloem in the movement of carbohydrates and other metabolic products. The pressure flow model, well, sugar enters the phloem via active transport. We're actively adding our sucrose molecules. As the sugar concentration increases, water will enter the sieve tube cells from the xylem by osmosis. Then the pressure will increase inside this area and push the sugar through the phloem. And sugar will move from the phloem to a sink by the process of active transport. You notice now that we're removing our sugar, the water is moving back across. Remember, our xylem contains more than just water. There's also minerals in the, in the xylem. And that's what is helping um, drive the water movement through the process of osmosis. So phloem loading, this, this is the process when sugars enter the phloem at a source point. So in some plants, sugar moves um, sugar-producing cells into companion cells in the sieve tube elements via plasma desmata. Remember, these are holes in the actual cell wall. You see that here, companion cell moving it through the plasma desmata. So we call it symplastic phloem loading. This is partially apoplastic phloem loading. In some plants, this is where sugar moves from sugar-producing cells in the, into the apoplast. ATP is required. We see that right here for active transport into the companion cells. Sugar moves into the sieve tube cell elements via transporter proteins via the plasma desmata. So here we're having those energy required, that ATP being broken down to ADP to allow this to occur. So both are accomplishing the same end result where we're getting our sugars into the flow. Now, certain insects will take advantage of this. Aphids in particular are notorious for using a stylet, which is this kind of long piercing mouth part, as we see here, um, to tap into the phloem. The aphid cuts into the phloem, allowing sap to easily be consumed. They're trying to consume the sugars that are within the plant. So that's why they specifically have mouth parts that penetrate the phloem. And they're what's called an insect, they are phloem feeders. Just referring back, remember sugar is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are saccharides. There are many different types of sugars. Sucrose is mostly used in the transport of, in plants. Sucrose is formed when a monomer of glucose and a monomer of fructose are joined together through the process of dehydration synthesis. Dehydration is the root removal of water. We see a hydroxide group and a hydrogen ion. OH and H come together to form water. Dehydration, that's losing the water molecule, and creating this bond here. And that's what's allowing these two monomers to be joined together to form sucrose, which is a disaccharide. Lastly, I think this image is pretty interesting. Uh, we're noticing that cell growth is a consequence of sugar import from the common simulate pool according to the source sink concept. So what does this mean? Well, cell growth is a consequence of the sugar import. So we have this radiograph here. What this image shows is labeled sugar molecules. So a concentration two and a half hours after tracer molecules were fed to older leaves in the plant. So we went through initially and the scientists added um, sugar molecules to older leaves. Red areas indicate an area of high concentration. So you see that here. The red color indicates high level of beta particles and those sugars emit radioactivity. Again, this doesn't mean that all plants are radioactive. This is just an example of scientists labeling certain sugar molecules to be able to help trace them and see where they end up. The key or take-home message here is that the concentration of, in young leaves, the image indicates that these are fast-growing young leaves, drew the radioactive sugars from the older leaves. So this indicates young leaves are actually a sink cell. They're pulling sugars from the older leaves. So just because it's a leaf doesn't mean it's always a source cell. Young leaves inter are developing. They're actually consuming more sugars than they're initially producing. Ultimately, when these reach maturity, they will produce more and become a source for the plant to allow it to be able to store it in different um, sink cells. And those could be tubers, those could be fruits, um, or other regions of the plant. But initially, young leaves are actually a sink before they fully develop.